How cruel is it to kill someone with a cockroach? This man used his hand to prop open the woman's mouth, a tube well over 18 centimeters directly, inserted into the mouth. Then, from inside a small red cloth bag, he took out a huge flesh-eating cockroach and put it inside the tube. The cockroach slid down the tube. The man couldn't help but cover his mouth for fear that the next one would be his turn. The man pulled out the tube inside the woman's mouth, and then hand over her mouth cockroaches down her throat and went in. The woman was lying on the ground and vomiting, but there was no effect. In order to ease the woman's pain, the man used a knife to stab her stomach and then rotate the knife 360 degrees, and then pulled along the body to the chest. After pulling out the knife, he put his hand along the wound and yanked out the woman's heart directly. The woman spat out blood and didn't breathe. If you feel that this woman died too badly, you are wrong. The woman's name is Kate, and 20 years ago was a very naughty child. She put a giant cockroach in Mike's mouth. Mike was too scared to move and the other kids saw this and not only did they not come up to stop it, they came up and covered Mike's mouth. Mike tried to break free. His face was all red. And finally, the cockroach was swallowed by him. Seeing Mike so cowardly, Kate brought a handful of poisonous spiders, all put on Mike's head. The poisonous spiders got into Mike's ears. He shouted helplessly. Mike wanted to run away. But a few naughty children soon came after him. They first nailed Mike's hand to the ground, and then a huge handful of giant worms thrown into his face. Mike was too scared to move, but the naughty children turned away. That's when Kate found Mike again and said she was taking him to a mysterious place, and then he was taken to a scary cabin. Kate told Mike to go inside. Mike was very scared. Kate then lied to him and said I will kiss you if you go inside. Mike believed her. As soon as he entered the room he was covered in the mouth. A naughty child did not help did not call the police but turned around and left. From then on Mike was locked into a pigsty. No blanket, no mattress, and a heavy chain. It turned out he was imprisoned by perverts. John only gave him raw meat every day, but also let him work constantly. Work a little slower. Mike will be subjected to high-pressure water gun drenching. He eats a little slower. Will be a fork into the leg inside. Tonight Mike could not stand it and escaped. Running and running he stopped. The road in front of him did not know where to go and there is no other place to go. Then he went back to the hut again. Since then he began to strengthen his exercise. He wanted to become tall and strong. Only then can revenge. More than 10 years have passed. Mike has grown to adulthood. On this day, the two men got into a fight and John knocked him down. How vicious the sick butcher was. He hung one of Mike's legs in chains with boiling water underneath. Mike kept begging for mercy and begging him to stop. That's when John suddenly coughed. Mike quickly got up untied the chain and jumped down from above, then knocked John unconscious, then John was hung up, it turned out that his parents had been looking for Mike that year, and to prevent Mike from being found by his parents John set fire to them directly, angry Mike slowly lowered the chain, John fell into the boiling water and died in a short time, after Mike cruelly ripped off John's face and made a horrible mask for himself, he became this way now, all because of the four naughty children, Mike decided to seek revenge on them, the grown-up George was playing with the children and then was knocked unconscious. When he woke up again he had been locked up in a secret room. Inside the chamber were also locked up two men and a woman, one of whom, Philip, was already dying. George was so puzzled that he tried to get up and leave, but found that his arms had been locked. The reason he was caught here is still unclear to them all. George tried to dig the wall, and Tom advised him that he had better not do anything useless. George insisted on digging out and ended up accidentally breaking his fingernail, causing him to lie on the ground and scream in pain, since digging the wall does not work. Then he dug the tunnel, but did not expect to dig a human skull. It seems that this chamber is really no way to get out. George found the camera above the wall. He cursed at the camera. This made Tom and Kate very scared and advised him that he had better be quiet. It didn't take long for Mike to arrive at the door, and seeing his burly figure, George was a little scared. Mike moved Philip to the middle and then handed Kate a knife and told him to scrape off a piece of flesh from Philip's body. Then Mike threw the knife to George. But George took the knife and stabbed at Mike. Mike reacted well, dodged quickly, and knocked George down with one punch. To punish George for his disobedience, Mike then fed Kate a cockroach. It didn't take long for George to accidentally find half a blade. He used the blade to quietly cut the rope. When Mike came in again, George cut Mike with the blade and then quickly ran out. The door had been locked. In a hurry George climbed into the ventilation ducts. Not expecting the ventilation ducts in disrepair. George fell down. He woke up again not only lying in the chamber, 
but also replaced a huge chain. Watching George woke up, Mike came to the chamber with the axe. He handed the axe to Tom. Tom knocked George unconscious. Then Mike took out the nails and asked Tom to use the axe to nail George to the board. After Tom smashed down with the axe, George woke up instantly in pain and soon passed out again in pain. When both his hands were set, Mike was satisfied and left the chamber. George is also a hard man looked at both hands were nailed to the board. He directly endured the pain hard to pull down. The whole process so that Tom could not bear to see. When George calmed down, he just wanted to analyze who Mike really is and why he wants to torture them so much. The dying Philip said that he had a brand of a horse's hoof on his hand. It was at this time that George remembered what the four of them had done 20 years ago. They thought not of apologizing, but of the mischief caused by feeling too young to know better at the time. What happens when a large number of spider eggs are injected into a person's ear? Mike brought in a syringe filled with yellow spider eggs. He told George to pour them directly into Kate's ears. And if he didn't do it, he would just taste him. Kate had to agree to Mike's request. Mike broke Kate's head hair and punched a tube of spider eggs all the way in. Then Mike lifted Philip and shook him, and slammed him into the wall above, which made sure Philip was dead. He went back to the room. He took out Philip's picture and drew a big X on it. The secret room George and Tom argued and even had a physical confrontation. By the time Mike came to the secret room, George was already lying dead on the floor. Even if he used a high-pressure water gun to George did not help. When Mike went up to check, George quickly got up and hugged Mike and asked Tom to rush to grab the water gun. Before Tom could act George was knocked down. Tom quickly pounced on Mike's body. Kate quickly picked up the hose, but was knocked down by Mike. After Mike subdued Tom, he asked Kate to help put a flesh-eating worm inside Tom's eyes. The worm quickly burrowed into Tom's eyeball. Mike was about to kill George when Kate suddenly started the speech. In a short time, Mike fainted. He picked up the can of water and left. The pain in Tom's eyeball was too much to bear. With Kate's help George gouged out his eyeballs. When he returned to the room, Mike kept smashing things. And in a short time, he demolished the room. The lights in the secret room flickered again. This meant that Mike was coming over again. Tom wanted to get a knife for protection. And George wouldn't give it to him. During the two men's struggle, George accidentally stabbed the knife into Mike's mouth. George pulled the knife off. And Mike died. Then the knife was snatched by Kate again. Just as Kate was holding the knife to George, Mike wrapped his arms around Kate's neck from behind and the knife was snatched by Mike. This time, George said, you are a good boy. If we had known what happened to you, we would not have left you at that time. Finally, Mike was actually convinced by him. George slowly took the knife out of his hand. Kate suddenly bit Mike. Mike turned around and George stabbed him in the stomach with the knife again. The painful Mike turned around again and George stabbed Kate in the stomach with the knife. Then Mike broke Kate's belly. Then Mike made an odd request. He asked George to kill him. This request made George very suspicious. And he was so scared that he turned and ran. The two chased and wrestled. George managed to escape from the cabin. But he did not get far from the cabin. Mike chased after him with a knife. Or asked George to kill him. George was not willing. Mike pressed him to the ground. If you do not kill me now, I will go to catch your daughter to live with me. Just when George was about to choke, he touched the knife on the ground. And finally. Mike was lying on the ground with serious injuries. Ten years later, George's two grown daughters came to play in the forest. Suddenly, Mike reappeared. This is the end of the movie. This movie tells us, never bully people. Some people's patience may exceed your imagination. Revenge may be ten years later. It may be twenty years later.